Sound Beast. I like to say that I'm really blessed to be able to have lots of different careers in my life. Um, I went to college and graduated from BYU and became an English teacher. And I thought I would change the world as an English teacher. And I thought I was passionate about it. And I got in the classroom and found that I didn't have it. <laughs> I didn't even like it. But I did like teaching. Um, so I, I continued to teach aerobics. I've taught fitness for over 30 years, all different kinds. Super excited to say I'm getting my yoga certification right now, and I'm passionate about that too. And I'm also getting my life coaching um, certification. I'm almost done with that. So as even though we have Lime Ricky, we still do other things that we're passionate about. Um, I have lucky enough to have five kids and a fourth grandchild on the way. So lots of different things in our lives. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything else that's important. Um, if I would just say one thing, just go with your passion, go with your strength, and then and it will take you where you wouldn't be able to go if you didn't have that passion. Okay. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my... Um, my in my history before I get into my role, I um, I spent my 20s battling cancer. I was interestingly enough diagnosed with breast cancer um, when I was 21 years old, almost 25 years ago this week. So um, I'm happy to still be around. Um, but I, I thank you. <laughs> But I, I kind of toggled having a child and then having cancer and having a child and having cancer. So that's kind of what my 20s were busy doing was fighting for my life and raising um, or having little children. Um, and so it, I, was in our, I was in my early 30s when we started to get the idea for Lime Ricky and I was just really involved in my kid's life. I was on the PTA board and I was a room mom. Um, my kids were like five to 10 years old when we started. Um, and I loved to do projects around my house and decorate it. And I love to make scrapbooks for my kids. And so that was my artistic creativity that I, an outlet for me. And so um, when it came time to start the business, it just made sense for me to take over like the graphic design, even though I was not trained in that, um, and to do um, all the marketing and advertising and then to to help with the design. So that's just kind of where we decided like we easily could define our strengths and what we were good at and that's where I landed. Well, my journey, just as each of us are pretty different, each of our journeys is different. When I went to college, I graduated as a nurse and worked in the emergency department and ICU for years and then sort of got bored with that so I went back to school and got my nurse practitioner degree and worked in podiatry and thought I loved it. I love going to work, coming home. I'm done with it. I don't have to think about it again. And, and then I got married and then I had a baby and then I thought I don't want to have to go to work and have someone tell me when to be there and how long to be there and to do it every day. And so thought, how can I get creative so I can do sort of keep my profession as well as um, have my family. And so I started my first business doing um, home podiatry. And it was something I could work into my schedule, do it when I wanted, have as many patients as I wanted, and it worked great. Uh, and so that sort of started this entrepreneurial uh, spirit in me, which I didn't have at one time. It just sort of budded as my life experience grew. And, and then, of course, our business came together. And, you know, Colette talks about her design history and all that. And, and Nicole talks about how creative she was. Well, the only thing left was finance. And uh, I, I don't have a background in finance. I, I don't balance my checkbook or my bank account. It's really not something I just <laughs> am excited to go to work to do. Um, however, I'm also the only sister that really knows how to control their spending um, and, and be frugal. And so really, it's just a glorified babysitting job of my sisters of telling them when they can and cannot spend money. Um, and, and then I also am over operations, the um, setup of our warehouse and our store um, computer parts, and also human resources. So right, the glorious part of the job is mine behind the scenes. So, that's that. 
All right, so this next one is getting our feet wet. Because, um, you know, you get a business idea, and then what do you do? Well, for one, you need product, and the other is you need money. And so to start financing our business, we pooled all the money we had together, which was like $6,000. And then we thought, well, we'll need a little more than that. So we hit up our parents for a little. And then we went to a bank to get a loan and started with a very small loan, but it was enough to launch our first line. And we got it together. We threw up a, a website. It was a lot harder back then. You couldn't just plug into Wix or Square or something like that. It had to be custom made. And we were able to find one of our friends who happened to do that and they put it together when we started to sell our suits. Um, are you talking about the magazine? Anything? And so another thing we did to start getting it out there was to, have, we had our mom email all her friends saying, wow, my daughters are starting a business, check it out. And one of them wrote for a magazine and so she wrote a magazine article about us and that sort of expanded the circle a little bit more. and. and and increased our reach of people. Um, but uh, as we went along, um, it, things were going pretty well until about 2008 when the crash hit uh, of the market. And believe it or not, swimsuits aren't like a high commodity at that time for banks. And I was just getting ready to write a very big check to one of our manufacturers. And I went and I double checked our bank account to to transfer the funds, and our loan said zero. I'm like, what? what? You know, we've got to pay them. This is like, if we don't have product, we don't have a business and things. And, and, and if I can interject, this was like a month before we were going to open our first store. So like, we were like spending, you know, like money to get the store ready. And anyways, hit it a really crazy time. Yeah, good point. Lots of expenses, and the loan just wiped out from under us. And I remember calling Nicole just in tears. I can't pay this check. And what are we going to do? We're going to go under and just oh. And then so and then Nicole called Colette. And she's like, "That is our loan, and that is our money." She's the feisty sister. <laughs> so she calls the bank and explains everything and everything. Well, they ended up giving our loan back to us, and we made it through that. But lots of up and and downs like that. You know, you think, "Oh, we'll get money." Look. The bank, can't, can't you see how great we are? Of course we're going to make it big. Give us the money. And, and they don't often think that same way. Part of it, however, might be, I think it was like our second time going, and we were asking for a little bigger loan. And we had just gone to lunch. And we go over to the bank afterwards and, and talk with them and tell them our great story and what our plans are and what we would do with all this money they're going to give us. And, and then we leave. And we look down and we realize that we're wearing flip-flops and like t-shirts and, and some capris or something. We didn't get the loan. I don't understand. Can I but interject? That's when Nicole gave us the lecture about, about how, how we dress and that we had to take up, up a few notches. So ever since then, <laughs> we've taken so, it up a notch. So look professional. Our next bank uh, visit, we did look more professional. We polished our our spiel. Um, we talked a few friends into investing with us and and now we're lucky enough to have a good loan from a bank that's that's making it but like business it's always changing always growing always involving so we're just enjoying this until till the next thing so. yeah. but there's been many times when we thought like oh I don't know if I don't know if we can like finance this another year or if we can pull this off and then some way we like put our heads together and figure things out and it's been a little smoother the past um, several years so okay I'm going to talk about choosing how we chose our name carefully um, so like I said we love to travel when we were growing up and um, our parents actually met in Paris on missions for the LDS Church and they um, so we had visited France um, traveled and spent time there and we all took French in high school and we're like we need a French name like we have to have a French name so we put our heads together and we came up with this great name called Tre Soleil and that means like very and sun 
And we started telling our friends, like, we have this business idea, and it's all about swimsuits, and, our, and they're like, what's the name? And we're like, Trey Soleil, and they're like, what? And how do you spell that? And what, what does that have to do with swimsuits? And we're like, we'd already had our business license. We were like already going, and we're like, uh-oh. <laughs> we, so we need to really think about our name and what we're doing. And so my husband's in advertising and marketing, and so he's like, let's just ha sit down and have a brainstorming session. So we, um, after we put our kids to bed one night, he and I just sat down and we got a notebook out and we filled three pages with, with all the possibilities. And we just, anything we, we said we wrote down because it could spur another creative idea. And somewhere in there I was like, I remember when I was a kid and we would go to Arctic Circle and get a lime ricky. And so I was like, that's fun. That reminds me of summer. So I wrote it down and... Um, then I told my sisters about it. Um, I actually read them all the names, but both of them individually chose Lime Ricky on their own, and that's kind of what popped out to me. So that um, is where we got Lime Ricky from. And um, we had to do a DBA, change our business name, and then I was tasked with creating the logo. And um, like I said, I loved creativity. Um, I did not have like a true graphic design background um, other than like loving to scrapbook. Um, and this is where I'm gonna interject with a little story because when I was a sophomore at BYU, I decided that I wanted to apply to the graphic design program. And I went there, I got my courage by myself and I went and I was, found out what the requirements were and they took me on a tour. And then at the end they said, oh, and you need a portfolio. And I was like, oh. And I went home and I was like, felt so dejected because I hadn't taken that many art classes in high school. I didn't have a portfolio. I really wasn't taking art classes in college. And like, I just decided, I guess graphic design is not for me. And I turned into an English and communications major. So, <laughs> um, so the moral of that story is one, if you have a passion and a desire to do something and someone puts a little roadblock in your way, don't let that deter you. So if, follow your passions and your dreams. Additionally, the second part is even if you don't follow your passions and your dreams and you don't apply to graphic design school like I didn't, it still worked out just fine. Like <laughs> I've had plenty of opportunity to learn graphic design for the past 12 years and um, I've really enjoyed it. So it's all worked out. Um, but I wanna show you, so I designed the logo. I had Microsoft Word um, and I was like, tried out some fonts and I came up with basically that but when we built our website the, the guy like fixed it up and put the shadow in and stuff but that's what I came up in Microsoft Word which I was really proud of because it's hard to do graphic design <laughs> in Microsoft Word um, so that was our first logo when we opened our website in 2007 so um, like Jennifer said we really quick just um, built a website and then put the word out and thought we could create a business and somehow we did. Um, and then I like change, I get bored really easily. So like by 2008, I was like, we need a new logo and I came up with that. And then about 2010, 11, we um, hired someone to help us a little bit and he's like, you need to streamline this and make it really simple and easy and clear. So that's been the logo that we've used for quite a few years until we kind of introduced a little bit more um, feminine cursive logo um, this past year. So anyways, we everything keeps changing and evolving and we our interests change and um, our tastes change and that's kind of fun for us to look back and, and see where we've been and think about where we are going. So one of the questions we get asked a lot is, did you sew suits in your basement? And the answer is no, we never did, even though I suppose we could have, we never wanted to do that. We just wanted to design them and have someone else do the rest. So my daughter Jasmine, um, and I guess I, would, I will just interject right here what um, an amazing experience it's been for our kids. My daughter Jasmine is 25 now and she's a graphic designer and has worked her way up through Lime Ricky and, and now has her own job. Her daughter Grace is 23 and she's also a graphic designer and she worked her way through Lime Ricky and now has her own job. And they both do consulting for us. Nicole's oldest daughter has worked her way up. She's through Lime Ricky and she's now a social media guru for another company. We feel like we launched them. Jennifer's daughter Isabel is now working her way up. She's from still in the warehouse with me. <laughs> she's still in the warehouse. 
all of our kids have worked for Lime Ricky, and it's been a really great opportunity for them to do things they, they probably never would have um, been able to do um, without that. So anyway, design and production. So Jasmine, my daughter, did help me with our first sketches. We just sketched out suits, and then I went to my neighbor, Judy, who did pattern making and said, Judy, can you make this? And she did. And we'd take it home, and we'd fit it to our bodies and say, we want this, we want this. We knew that there were certain things that our swimsuits would be. Um, they would be lined. They would have bra pads. They would be comfortable they would offer more coverage we just knew that was uh, what we uh, would offer so we just sketched and she'd make samples and then and then what well it it happens that production isn't just on the internet so we just kind of rooted around we made phone calls and one of the ways that we have grown the most is in our ability to have um, interactions with other people that first time we were calling production people in, L in LA, I can't remember where, we had, to <laughs> we had to get together and do a cheer and do Eye of the Tiger, you can do it, you can make this call. Um, and now, of course, it's easy to make phone calls and ask, ask questions, but um, so, so then we had someone to grade and make it in different sizes and then we started production in Provo. There's a production place and he's still there, um, wonderful. After our first run of five or 600 suits, they sold out and we were ready to go bigger. And he wasn't able to keep up with our capacity, so we went to LA. Um, we've also had the chance to go to China and we've also spent about five or six years producing in Mexico. And we're really happy to say that we're back to one of our guys in LA that we've worked with many years before. So we've kind of done a lot of things and had lots of different experiences um, with that. And I think I'll end there and tell you more in just a minute. So, um, so Colette got our suits together. We got them manufactured. We got our website, a place to sell them. And then there's like, where, where do we keep them? And our initial idea was to keep it in Colette's basement. Because she was in Provo. She had a little space and things. And we even ha spent a day like putting tile on the floor, or well, linoleum. It looked like tile and making some shelves and stuff. And it was about that time that it hit us. You know, I'm not sure this is the best idea. Play maybe to your strength. <laughs> maybe we should play to people's strengths. And, and we thought we probably want them out on time and, and things like that. And so we pulled it from Colette and, and it ended up in my basement. And, and I had just moved to North Ogden and built a home that had an unfinished basement. So. We put the shelves up there and started shipping we out the of there. Ourselves, by the way. <laughs> Two by fours and sheet and planks, um, and it started there. And so I was the financer and the shipper and the well for customer service. We would put the number on our cell phones and take turns on days. Um, answering phone calls for our customer service. Can I interject? We'd literally be sitting at the pool or somewhere and it would be our day for customer service <laughs> and the calls would come in and we'd just, or grocery shopping, you know, whatever we were doing, we'd just take, take the calls and pretend that we were big. <laughs> yeah, make noise in the background. Um, and so, so it started in my basement. And, and then people started calling and they would say, well, is there a place to try it on? And we'd say no. And they said, well, do you have a house we could try it on? Yeah, I guess. And so people would come over to our home. So like I said, I was in North Ogden, Nicole was in Salt Lake, and Colette was in Provo. So we had the whole Wasatch front covered. And we spent the summer having people come to our homes and try on swimsuits. Um, after that summer, we decided, let's open a store. It wasn't a fun summer. And, and we opened our first store in Salt Lake. And, and then we were able to open one in, in Provo. And, and then most of our business is online. It's easy, it's less expensive, and it's worked out really well for us. But it's sort of been an evolution of trying out the online first. When there's a need that we see, we fill it, move on to the next thing. Whatever that need is that our customers are, are wanting, are asking for, it's usually like one of those green lights, okay, let's consider this and, and move forward in that. And, and it, it usually pays off for those, those things. 
Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Lime Ricky brand. So uh, initially when we started, um, the idea was to, to create so, or design some swimsuits that were cute, that had a little bit more coverage, and, um, that's, and that were fun and eclectic. Like we just, we're really, we love, oh, I keep hitting that, sorry. I, um, we love color and pattern, and so that was really important to us. Um, and, and, and that's kind of just what the brand was. It was like fun and carefree. Now, we are 11, I guess this was like our 12th season actually, I think. So 12 seasons later, we have realized with um, the advancement of social media that <laughs> um, our company is more than just a company about swimsuits. So our company is um, a community where it's safe for all women to come and that's what's meaningful and important to us is to create a a safe space for women to buy a swimsuit and for them to really um, enjoy doing all the fun things that you do in a swimsuit. So like I said, Facebook was, I think, barely around in 2007, but I didn't have a Facebook account. These guys didn't. We, we didn't really know what it was. Um, there were blogs were just, I was starting to read quite a few blogs about that time, but like the accessibility to like beautiful photographers and um, beautiful websites wasn't what it, it, it is today. Um, so we just like pieced together what what we could. Um, and this is our very first collection. Um, so like you could see we loved color and patterns. We would mix patterns and people kind of thought we were crazy, but that's what we liked and thought um, was fun. Um, additionally, Jennifer talked about how when we launched, we like told our parents to email everyone. We also emailed all our friends. A few other things that we did, um, we um, started doing some SEO work, which is search engine optimization, and we had someone working on that from the very beginning, which was really helpful. We have kind of a niche product um, for modesty, so um, that that was really helpful in getting our, our feet off the ground. We also started doing lots of local advertising. We sponsored like our high, the high school we all went to in Provo. We sponsored their football team and did a big party, and we just like tried to get involved in things and get the the word out so that people could find us. And mostly, you know, locally we relied on all of our friends to share the word, and they did. Um, so. That was the beginning. We shot this in my neighbor's garage with like a white sheet behind us with my friend who also liked to scrapbook with her camera. So like it was so basic. Like, uh, that's why I'm not showing you more pictures because <laughs> they're not fabulous. So this is 2011. By 2011, we like had a creative or a creative director in house and who was helping us like really pull things together and make us look like a professional company. Um, so this was like our first on on seen a photo shoot down in St. George and we had originally reserved a pool um, on St. George Boulevard like an old motel with a cool vintage sign and a kidney bean shaped pool and when we got down there they said there's mold in the pool you guys cannot shoot here and we're like ah so I called a friend who has a house and he's like house there with a community pool and we went and he's like just go to the community pool you can shoot there so we started shooting there and then the security guards came and kicked us out and we because got because they were having a wedding oh, yeah. there they were having a wedding and we didn't have permission so <laughs> anyways it was kind of a chaos but he said you can go shoot in the parking lot the dirt parking lot so that's the dirt parking lot in the community pool of my friend's <laughs> house in St. George and we yeah we had to actually, on the, on the top of this picture on the right, I had to Photoshop out a house that was up there. So anyways, um, <laughs> we're really good at making, you know, being adjustable and creative when we need to. Um, so that year we also decided like, wow, we, we have women's swimsuits down and teenagers' swimsuits down. Let's expand this. And we, so we created like a little kid's line and like uh, eight to 12 year old line and then we did men's suits and maternity and then our regular line and we had a huge collection huge amount of manufacturing and it didn't do as well as we thought we were like what's going on why look at how beautiful all our imagery is and look how you know we've marketed it but what we realized is that we had created a space a comfortable um, space within um, like an age group of women from 
like 16 to 50, well, 50 plus, and that people were kind of confused that why we suddenly had like kids stuff and men's stuff, and there was just kind of some incongruencies. And so after one year, we were like, that was so much work, we are not doing that again. But that's what this was. Okay, and now we've kind of evolved to 2018. Um, like I said, one of the things that's important to us is body positivity and um, making sure every woman feels like they are welcome at Lime Ricky. And so um, a lot of our campaigns are all revolve around that. Um, additionally, um, we think it's so important. We have so many memories from growing up swimming that we want women to like use our bodies and get in the water and create memories and um, have fun. And so that's really the focus of, of what we do now. Um, like our introduction said, um, we never airbrush or Photoshop our models. Um, we're all women company who's really committed to like encouraging um, women to use their bodies and use their um, get out with your kids. I used to sit on the side of the pool all the time when my kids were little because I didn't want to get my hair wet. So I'd like tell my husband like, you go, you go do that. And I think like, oh, sometimes I really missed out. Um, we, so we create swimsuits that are comfortable. So people don't have to worry what they, about what they look like. They can just go have fun. Um, our... Our um, photo shoots traveled all the way to Thailand this year, so it was really um, fun to get some imagery there. And I do want to show you, um, oh, we also, actually, I'll do this first. We've also expanded to, to provide clothes for women that you would wear on vacation or um, around um, the beach, whatever you, you know, like whatever you're comfortable in. So we have a good selection of clothing as well. Um, and then we'll see, this is a video that we created this year. And I don't know if I can get it to play or not. <laughs> So I guess one thing I would just add um, as we come to a close here before Jen talks is it's a journey. It's a big journey. There's been lots of ups and lots of downs. And one of the things that we've learned um, early on was from our mom when she taught us about relationships. We didn't get to that. But the first ground rule we set was that our relationship with each other came first. It came before money. It came before the company. That our relationships with each other as sisters was the most important thing. And that we wouldn't make any decision um, unless we all three agreed. So no ganging up, two against one. And it's been, so that was the summer of 2006, and here we are. And um, we've kept to the ground rules. Sometimes super rocky. 
<laughs> mostly awesome. Um, the other relationships that are super important to us are the relationships that we have with our vendors and our manufacturers. Just a super quick story. Um, it's a lot of times, it's the people you have and it's the people you know who might know someone else or who might hook you up. I was in the grocery store one day and David the bra pad guy called me and he said, Colette, you're producing in China. How come you're not in Mexico? I'm like, well, because we're in China. And he said, well, when you're ready to go to Mexico, call me. Well, we thought we were set in China and things didn't go so well. So pretty soon I was calling David and he hooked us up with his people in Mexico. Um, it, that's happened so many times. Our Joseph the fabric guy, same grocery store. <laughs> Good karma. Hey, if you need another production guy, I know someone else in LA. And I thought, well, okay, good to know. Log it in. And before long, we did need that contact information. So relationships are really important. Once we got to know our produce, our manufacturer, he would start asking, well, how much are you paying for that? Or how much are you paying for that? You can get it for this. Um, just so... Um, and then the, and the <laughs> and face to face is super important. David the bra pad guy again called. So when are you coming out to LA? And we just thought, oh well, why do we need to? It's working great over email. He said, just come out. Let's meet face to face. And he taught us a really important lesson that it, the relationship is really important. And we've had some really great relationships with people. And our finally is with our customer. I mean, we're in business because of our customer and we love them and we um, want to hear from them and we want to be a company that speaks to them and that offers them something that we feel like is a, that they feel like is a great value. So relationships. And, and just to sum everything up, you know, business and having your own business is the best and worst thing that's ever happened to us. It's brought us the greatest joys and it's given us the greatest sorrows. And we wouldn't trade it for anything. And so following, following your passion and knowing that it, it is a true statement that it gets dark, darkest right before the dawn and to not give up when, those, when it seems like it's a dead end and there's no way. You know, I saw a graphic the other day that had, had this like straight line with an arrow at the end and said, this is what we think success is. And then it had a, a picture right next to it, which was the start of the arrow and the end of the arrow. And in between, it was like this jumbled ball of yarnish, you know, convoluted thing and says, this is what it actually is. And it's such a true statement that it never is how you think it is. It not often ends up how you think it might, but man, the ride is fun. So we'll open it up if there are any questions or anything in the last couple minutes. That or we were really complete, yeah. That's, that's a really good question. The research we did was just simply our own experience and seeing that there really was a need. We saw the need because we were our customer then, and we saw that it wasn't being filled. So we, we did it then, and we do now. <laughs> but, but I will add, we did ask our friends. <laughs> we asked a few people, and they all said yes, so we're like, sure. Oh, yeah. So Clean Water is a great organization that they, they go into, or Charity Water, excuse me. Um, they go into third world countries and do, very, do a lot of different kinds of water giving, whether it's digging a well or running pipe from a water source clear down into the village to where now they're making um, like portable water cleaners that they can put in someone's house that's just made out of dirt, rocks, and cement so that even a home can have like a water filter that will bring out clean water. And so we do um, charitable donations every month to them to support their cause. Because yeah. we love water. <laughs> <laughs> everyone should have clean drinking water. We like to drink water and swim in water, so it's important. We probably have time for one more. Okay. So the You know, uh, 
we didn't even get to go to Thailand, honestly. So um, it was just a select few photographer, videographer, and um, models that went. So yeah, it was. Uh, we were bummed out. We've we've we love to travel, like we've said, and we have been able to go all over. We've been to China. We've been to Mexico City a lot. We've been to L.A. more times than we can count. But. Thailand was one that we were sad to miss out on. Maybe we will start modeling though, and then we can go. There's one last hand over here. Oh, did you give me the Don't. Can you not say that out loud? <laughs> she just gets the glory. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. It's a wonderful presentation. We'll see you all here again next Wednesday.